Hey my friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Man Toy Month continues and this week we're testing the 2023 Ram TRX with 700 horsepower of supercharged V8 under the hood and lots of off-road cred. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside now. We're gonna take it for a drive out here in the desert and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. Big, meaty, and muscular. This thing looks like a bulldog. That's at least my interpretation of the styling. The 2023 Ram TRX comes to us pretty much unchanged uh, since the last time we tested one, the 2021 model. Here in diamond black, this is a pretty well loaded version, $105,000 as tested. This does start out down in the middle 80s, but this one has a lot of options on it. You can spend a little bit more money, but we're pretty close to the top here. So what do you get for your money when you go to TRX. Well, look at it, man. This has got all the styling tricks that Ram had to throw at this thing to make it aggressive and muscular. A special hood with heat extractors and that front nose has an air intake that ties into the intake system. 6.2 liter supercharged logo on the hood and this also has the TRX graphics which give us that flat black graphic there on the top. Coming down to the front, blackout grille with aggressive LED headlights. A unique bumper and fascia treatment, big tow hooks in the front, and looking down underneath you can see that this also has a full battery of skid plates that go all the way down to the midsection of the truck. Wheels and tires on this, 18 inch off-road tires, and these are Goodyear Wranglers on some nice alloys. Now, there is an optional wheel above this that costs a bit more money that's a beadlock capable wheel, and looking behind that wheel you can see the unique suspension that the TRX offers. It's increased ride height, it's increased travel, increased clearance, and Bilstein adaptive dampers that give us some adjustability so that we're good off-road and good on the road. Another option this has are the power extending mirrors. Now these slide out if you're going to have a big trailer behind you and you want to see around that, which is great if you're towing. If you don't tow, skip this. These are big giant elephant ears that actually they tie up a lot of your visibility as you're going down the road looking forward. Uh, they're great if you're going to tow and you need them, but if you don't need them, they're awful. And they're noisy in the wind too, and we'll get to that here shortly. From the rear three-quarter view, you can see that this has the same broad-shouldered look as the front. Wider quarters at the rear around that bed. And right here at the side though, I want to point out that this has an optional rock rail, which looks like a running board from the pictures you might see. But if you look up close, they're a little bit narrower, though you can use them to step up into the truck. They're not the best for that, but what they are good at is giving this thing a nice protective rail to keep that underbody from getting scraped if you high center over a mound of dirt on the trail or maybe up against some rocks or something like that. That's what rock rails are for and running boards are not. Coming to the back, graphics on the back, part of the optional graphics package, TRX, kind of hard to see on this diamond black. Big plastic fender protection looking underneath inside there. Over the tire, you can see the unique suspension that this has. This comes with a coil sprung five link suspension and then unique to the TRX, the Bilstein adaptive off-road shocks. And those are highly visible so everybody can see them. Now coming to the back, a few other things. This has the optional tonneau cover from Mopar inside, bed liner, all sorts of options in that bed, but eh, you've seen it before. Looking at the back, LED taillights and coming down, big dual exhaust tips in that bumper, trailer hitch receiver, and underneath, this has a full-size spare tire. The interior of the Ram TRX, just like other high-end versions of other trucks, is very special and unique to this model. Here, we've got a number of packages and upgrades that bring it well beyond the base level of the TRX and give it a nicer, more luxurious feel. And so as you look around, you see soft stitching and padding on the dash, some nice upholstery work, and that flows across the door panels as well as the console. These seats are leather, they're heated, they're ventilated, and they have TRX logos in them. And the steering wheel, also with a number of unique finishes, including the carbon fiber that you see flowing throughout that, also is an option here. This has paddle shifters, well done metal paddle shifters. The switch gear is good. Ahead of the steering wheel is a pretty familiar instrument cluster. It's got analog gauges on either side and a large seven inch 
digital color center screen that is customizable with a number of metrics. And over here on the center stack, this has the full top of the line 12 inch portrait style touchscreen human interface. And I say interface because it's more than just the infotainment system. And we'll get to this whole thing here in just a minute. But the center stack, very truck-like. Here in the TRX, it features auxiliary switches over to the right. This has the trailer steering system. Your trailer brake control is right next to that. Right below the start button is the drive mode selector and the shift mode selector for the transfer case and the button for the launch control there to the right. Down in the center console, a lot of versatility here. This has an openable cover for cup holders and it has a big bin right in the front with a wireless charger for your phone and a place to hold it. And right ahead of that are four USB ports, two of each kind. Traditional shifter right behind it, good thing. And this large center console cover here has a great plaque here that really sort of helps you feel better about all the money you spend. It's got the VIN number on it and it tells you all about the truck. It sort of commemorates how special it is. That's nice. I like it when they do that. Now, this is a pretty cool center console lid. It has a top that opens up for a storage tray in there, and you can put a lot of little things in there. And when you open it up down in the bottom, a lot of space down there. It's, it's something you could almost use for a cooler, although I don't know that it's watertight. And then in the back, there's a couple little rails that you can actually hang some file folders there as well. These seats are pretty comfortable. Um, they're not the most comfortable truck seats out there in this arena. The Raptor R we recently tested had Recaro seats in it, which were a little bit better, but these are still quite comfortable. And with the heating and ventilation, uh, you can really be versatile for the weather. The rear seat of the Ram, like in all of our tests before, is a place that you can see is very roomy. It's not quite like the Mega Cab that used to be out there, but it's pretty darn close when you look at how much space there is. And in that way, these seats are actually set for my height, which is about 5'9", with my boots on. And look how much space there is. There could be almost an 8-foot tall guy in front of me with the seat all the way back, and I would still not have that seat up against my knees. Now, um, there's probably no 8-foot guys out there, but... Um, I'm just making the point there's lots of space back here. Headroom is about three to four inches above my head, so I could probably be wearing my cowboy hat, no problem. The one thing I would say is that this is a very flat seat, and so I don't have a lot of side support. And the seating position, even though we are up pretty high, still feels like it's a little bit on the low side, but it's not uncomfortable. And the most important thing is you do have three across seating here that looks like it's equally comfortable for all three. Amenities back here are plenty in this fully loaded truck down on the back of the rear console. There are controls for the heated seats, controls for the ventilated seats that are back here. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. And then also the USB charging ports, and then there's also an AC port. And also in the center, if you don't have a passenger sitting here, this has more than just an armrest. It's a pretty big almost console. There is a space in here, just like the front, that's got some storage and cup holders to go, but it's a nice comfortable place to rest your arm. It's not just a token armrest. These seats do fold up in a 60-40 split to allow storage underneath. They're small bins, but not huge. But it does allow you to get those up out of the way for utilizing this floor space for some bigger objects. This is an interior I'm very happy with. In Rams of late, this generation, I think it's well done. The quality is good. The switch gear is good. The quality of the materials is consistent, even in these high trim levels where we have soft stitching everywhere. It doesn't clash with cheap parts here and there. It's well done. And in this particular vehicle with the equipment, uh, while it is a lot of money, at least it goes a long way to feeling its price. This interior gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is the top of the line from Ram. This is the portrait style Uconnect human interface. And here it's got a 19 speaker Harman Kardon audio system. And it has a lot of controls both in the menus as well as hard controls and I like it when they do that. On the right is the volume and on the left is the tuning and that is also duplicated on the steering wheel. But most importantly because the HVAC controls are mostly within the menus, you have to switch over on the menus to show a screen for the climate control. The most basic used buttons are actually on each side, so you don't have to go paging through menus to do the most common things like on and off, the fan controls and the temperature controls. And some of the more detailed things, you do have to hop into the comfort menu to do that. And it's just really well done and gives you both ways to go 
when you're working with it. Navigating the menus is very simple and easy. The one thing I would complain about here is though we do have a very large screen. When you get into the backup cameras and the 360 degree views, it doesn't utilize the entire screen area. It only uses half of it. So I do find that the views and all of the extra bit you get with the 360 degree camera views are uh, not quite what you get in some of the competitors where they fully utilize that screen space. There's also the performance pages here because we do have the big engine with all the power and with the launch control and all of these adjustments, you can really play with it and time yourself and see what you could do zero to 60 trap just a, a litany of things tied to that so it's well done i like it it's uh one of the better in the business this is a system that um, offers all of the feature content that's pretty much available right now and the audio quality is great this system gets five out of five stars all right my friends it's finally time to take a drive and we're starting out here in the great far far away that's what a truck like this is for and so off we go. Now, the TRX is more than just the Rebel, which is the next off-road toy down the scale in the Ram lineup. This one's quite a bit different. It's got a much wider track, a much higher lift in its suspension, a completely unique suspension front and rear, and its coil sprung at all four corners, and at all four corners are some pretty heavy-duty Bilstein Blackhawk adaptive dampers adaptive meaning they can adjust on the fly and they adjust to your drive modes and speaking of those drive modes this has all manner of adjustable drive modes that go from mud rock sand all of those things um, i've got it set on auto right now just because that makes the most sense for what we're doing today and so what we're doing today is really just kind of getting a feel for the suspensions articulation how well it's tuned and how well the traction can push things around. This has a 50 to 50 split uh, for its standard all wheel drive. It's full time all wheel drive and that can vary up to 30, 70 depending on the drive mode, 45, 55 and some. So what I'm finding here is this truck, despite its size, is actually pretty maneuverable. The steering has got a nice weighting to it. And even though it's very close in size to its major competitor, to me, it feels like it's just a little bit tighter in its turning circle. Now, this, of course, is very controllable on grades with not only the brakes, but it also has hill descent control. What I'm finding here is that the suspension is very well tuned for off-roading. It doesn't beat you to death. It's got a nice compliant way about it. And getting some speed going down this hill, you know, it just has a nice solid frame underneath. I don't feel any twisting or shuddering or rattling in this cab and in the structure there is some rattling back there that's my tripods and camera equipment but it just feels good out here maneuvering on a tight trail with a little bit of speed on and with all of the additional approach angle departure angle and breakover angle uh, this is a truck that you can take almost anywhere in terms of rough terrain what we're doing right here and right now is barely touching the surface this is the same area that really impressed me with the trx last time i tested it uh, being able to just throw it around out here in the rough without any drama but with any vehicle i like to test the most important test is the desert washboard road And this desert washboard road literally got manicured within the last couple of hours since I got out here to this area, but it still has a lot of its loose gravel and that washboard rib surface for us to get an idea of how well bolted together this is. And what's nice about this, because of its big off-road tires, which give us a softer ride and a lot more isolation from these rough ribs in this road and the gravel and surface irregularities it's it's a pretty nice magic carpet experience and the best part about it out here is that you know obviously i'm not getting any rattling in the suspension or the steering i would hope not but the best part about it is i'm not getting any rattling or shuddering in this structure this cab and this frame is tight which means you can really blow and go out in the open without feeling like you're driving a big pos and that's kind of a hot button for me, especially if you're spending a hundred grand. So good off-road, good out here on the dirt road. Let's see how it does on the pavement. 
On the pavement, this has the same compliant ride that we saw out in the trails. And that means that because this is oriented towards off-roading, it's got a softer suspension. So it rides pretty nice, quite frankly. And out here on my favorite back road, noisy pavement, it is somewhat quiet in here. And I will only say that with the caveat that I'm talking about tire noise on our 70 mile an hour test that we do on the freeway. This was one of the higher decibel readings that I've gotten in recent memory, 63.5 decibels. And actually most of that's wind noise that I get from the cow and around these mirrors. You know, these big elephant ears, they make a little bit of noise in the wind. But as I'm out here on the highway in sport mode, the suspension is at one of its stiffest settings. I am still getting a little bit of a softness in a boat, but it does give a little bit more stability which means you can throw it into a corner at speed and actually be able to do that. And these tires, even though they are for off-roading, they seem to be well suited for the road for the most part as well. So they've done a pretty good job. The only thing I wish is that this held its own under power a little bit better and around town maybe a little bit less sloppy when it comes to just everyday driving. This chassis gets four out of five stars. So now the fun part, let's talk about what's under the hood. That's the big news of the TRX, 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8, essentially the same V8 you're gonna find under anything with a Hellcat emblem on it, and an eight speed automatic transmission. And here it comes with full-time four wheel drive that has a variety of different adjustments. But for sport, which we're set on right now, coming to a stop, is at 30% front, 70% rear as far as the bias. And so the question I always like to ask is how does it go? And go. Woo! Nice sound. And 60. Woo! And uh, almost 100. I gotta slow down. There's a corner coming up. Woo! Uh, this thing's boating around just a little bit. It's not a sports car. You gotta slow down before these big corners. So the thing snaps off speed pretty good. Now I will note that having just driven the Raptor R last week, not quite as fast. And even though the horsepower is identical at 702 horsepower and 650 pound feet of torque, this weighs a lot more. This is over 400 pounds more in terms of its weight. And that's because this has a steel body, the Ford has an aluminum body. This also has a different drive ratio, 355 at the rear axle instead of the 411 of the Raptor R. So there's a few reasons why the Raptor R feels a little bit quicker. That said, this is a great powertrain. It's got a wonderful sound. Listen to that. Woo! <laughs> Gotta slow down again, corner coming up. <sighs> Very intoxicating, I must say. And this transmission, the best in the business, much better than I think that the 10 speed is in the Raptor R. It hunts around and it's busy. This doesn't. It's right where you want it all the time, 24 seven. So this is a great powertrain. I've loved it in everything that I've tested and it just works And the sound, the power, all of it. It's what you pay for. And it's actually a little bit more refined, I think, than the Raptor R. And I hate to keep comparing it to that, but that's the number one competitor. Now, fuel economy, 10 miles per gallon city, 14 highway and 12 combined. Well, in my week with it, driving it around, pretty much like you've seen me doing, um, I got 10 miles to the gallon. Nonetheless, I absolutely love this powertrain. It gets five out of five stars. Boing. <laughs> yeah. If you've watched any number of my videos, by now you know that a supercharger and a V8 just get me happy, man. I love the feel, I love the sound, I love the rush of hitting the accelerator and just getting all of that. Woof. Now, value and competition, $105,000, ah, that's a lot of money. Uh, it's not quite as much money as the Raptor R we just tested last week, but it's still a lot of money. And it's worth pointing out, since I mentioned the Raptor R, that this does start out at around $85,000 for a base model TRX. This one's well optioned, and you can spend a little bit more here. 
but the Raptor R, it starts out at $109,000 and it comes fully loaded. You can add a few things, but uh, the Ram, the TRX, is the only one of the two that offers you the option to spend less money. So I think that's a good thing. I, I tend to be a plain wrapper kind of guy, and I would be happy with cloth seats and not all of the bells and whistles uh, and still having all the off-road capability and the power and so forth. That said, when I look at things like quality, it's just as good as you'd expect from a Ram. It's not the best in the business, not the worst. Warranty coverage, 336 bumper to bumper, five years, 60,000 mile powertrain, which is great if you've got a 700 horsepower supercharged V8, that's a good thing to have. And I also recommend you get the extended warranty if you're gonna keep it. And so, but how does it compete? Well, honestly, it's not quite as fast as the Raptor. Raptor's lighter. It doesn't have the payload. It doesn't have the towing capability that the Raptor has. The Raptor also has better approach and departure angles and all of those things because it's a little bit taller with a little bit more clearance. Uh, that said, I like this vehicle. I like the styling of it. I like the way it looks, the packaging. I like the interior quite a bit, even though it doesn't have the most comfortable seats of the two vehicles that I've mentioned. Um, I just like the overall package. I think it's a good deal. So I put competitiveness and value at four out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. And you know what else? It goes on my buy it list. Yeah, I'd buy this if I were spending $100,000 plus on a four wheel drive supercharged man toy that I didn't need. This is the one I'd get, and uh, Raptor R didn't get that. And it's a great truck, don't get me wrong. I just, it's subjective. I like this one better. I just like the overall picture, the feel, and the feeling of it as I live with it every day. And so that's my pick. So there you go, I'd buy it. Now, if you like what we do, you can see our latest video right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.